Welcome back to another episode of Editing with Lightroom. Today we're going to see a new image and how to pass product at best, uh, this one. So let's go to see the workflow and what we are going to do with this picture. So today we are going to edit uh, this uh, portrait picture I took uh, one year ago with my friends uh, Gianmarco and Sara. As you can see, I shoot with the X-Pro2 and with the 90mm lens f2. I think it's one of my favorite lens in the Fuji catalog with the 5612. Uh, As you can see, the background uh, bokeh is really nice and the sharpness. Let's wait one second, that is loading the high resolution. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, the sharpness is really, really nice too. So, really, really good lens. Before start, I want to show you, I'm using Snapshot. A snapshot is like a way to save some uh, edit uh, process during the uh, you work inside Lightroom. So I'm going to like create a first snapshot that is, I call it one, uh, no edit. So in, in this way we can always go back and doing some comparison before and after. If you have looked at uh, some of my previous um, tutorial on portrait, I show that I always start uh, from the cal camera calibration because camera calibration has inside the um, Fuji color profile that gives uh, a really unique uh, tones to the image and is giving these tones uh, based uh, on the camera calibration that did Fuji for their camera. And I want to show the difference in this case that we have from a color profile as the classic chrome and a color profile as the Astia. In this case, the Astia gives uh, in the beginning a uh, nicer and warmer tones on the skin uh, and here on the background with the flowers and everything. Uh, while the classic chrome that is uh, mimic, uh, we can say the uh, same color as the co um, Kodak Kodachrome gives a bit uh, less saturation and in general uh, also this uh, strong contrast in the in the shadow. In general I really like the classic chrome for the skin tones because uh, in general it's really mute tones uh, for the skin. I really like as a starting point uh, but uh, I don't like uh, that is uh, so less saturated and especially on a day as the one that I shoot that was a bit overcast, uh, it gives uh, not so much uh, nice uh, color. In general, I'm starting with the classic chrome, but then I'm going to edit and to, in some way, enhance the classic chrome uh, uh, response. So what I'm going to do usually, I like uh, uh, rise up the saturation and rise up the vibrance. So saturation to plus 10 in this case and vibrance to plus 15. And then uh, I'm going to open a bit the shadows, usually plus 20, plus 25 to give a bit more back this uh, reading on the dark tones. And uh, if we can see from the beginning, uh, no edit, we have already a nicer uh, nicer tone and not like uh, less saturated as uh, was before. Then uh, looking also at the color temperature from the histogram I want to a little bit uh, cool down the picture and uh, as you can see I really love when the tones of the skin uh, are uh, really neutral. Okay maybe a bit uh, more warm. Okay like this I think is fine. Other things I'm going now to show you is like with the tone curve uh, what you also you can do for uh, not have this strong black uh, uh, contrast is to use the tone curve to rise up a bit of the black. So first things uh, you have to check uh, that your tone curve shows as a line. If it doesn't show as a line you have to press on this small button here on the corner and you can see now I can have uh, the curve that works a bit like Photoshop. And uh, if I rise up the black point, uh, okay, and then I'm going to add two points uh, here and one here to compensate this uh, movement. Okay, 
From the histogram, you can already see that I don't have uh, any black anymore. And this is uh, something that is different from what I did uh, in the previous, previous tutorial, where I was going to add uh, some contrast with the blacks. In this case, I'm going to reduce. This to show you that it's not always that you have to add the black. Sometimes you would like to have less contrast and a more like a neutral image. In this way, you can see the black are a bit more soft. Uh, let's rise up a bit more. Okay, so like this. Then, next step I'm going to do is to check the skin. Uh, and uh, we're going a bit to clean up some of the spot uh, using the healing brush tool. So, I'm going to click here on the icon of the heal brush tool and select heal. And in this way, the tool works uh, as the one we have in Photoshop, with the difference that in Photoshop we can be more uh, accurate in the way we use the tool, and for sure also faster. So if I have to do really a quick edit, usually I can do it in Lightroom, but for perform best edit, for sure, like said in the previous uh, tutorial, movie i'm moving to photoshop because uh, the best results you always get in photoshop but as you can see we can stay in lightroom doing this edit and we have also the big advantage that we have we haven't to uh, create a psd file okay sorry let's go zoom out and zoom in on the skin of the male model uh, we don't have to create a PSD file, so we can stay with uh, raw files. So we are actually working directly on the raw in uh, in Lightroom. So there's a big uh, advantage. So now I'm not going to do all the skins, also because our intent is not to do a beauty retouch for this picture. I just want to show you what you can uh, do for a portrait directly in Lightroom. And another thing I'm going to show you to soft a bit the skin of the model, of the female model, I'm going to take uh, another uh, brush uh, and I check that everything is on zero. Flow of my tablet now I set to 100. And then I start to brush, okay? As I brush, uh, I cannot notice anything. So I'm going to press the O key. And with the O key pressed, uh, I can see the mask where I am uh, drawing. In this way, I'm going to draw on the skin of the model. And if you go a bit too much inside, you can always remove, press the Alt key. Pressing the Alt key, the brush is becoming like minus. And in this way, you can uh, remove the settings. And then I'm going to add here on the skin. Okay and I zoom back uh, on the skin of the model. Then I press again O. And I want to show you that uh, what I'm going to apply, what regulation I'm going to apply on the skin. I'm going to apply a clarity with minus. I want to show you, going to exaggerate what is doing the clarity. So as you can see, going to minus, the settings is going to give a soft of the skin. And uh, of course, I don't have to use to minus 100. Usually, I am a step uh, around minus 50. And remember always to look uh, at the result uh, going uh, a bit farther. And you can see that the skin is already soft out a bit. And usually, you can always give a little, little bit of more exposure and a little bit less of saturation. OK. Then, other little uh, enhance I'm going to do to this picture is to give a bit more of exposure here because you see that the um, hat is going to cast a little shadow on the eye. And in general, also the eye of the model, the male model, I want to give a bit more light. So I'm going to take again the brush. I check everything is on zero. And uh, the flow, I'm going to put down to 
20. In this case, I'm going to use flow really small because I'm going to build up my regulation, my setting, that is going to be an exposure value to plus 2. I know that it's going to sound really high, but uh, you have to consider I am going to paint with really small flow and I'm going to use like the Wacom tablet with the pressure sensitivity. So as you can see, when I start to brush, you can not almost notice anything, but in general I am softly going to rise up the exposure in the area I told you before. So here on the eye, a bit here, okay so I'm pressing really gentle on the on the tablet, on the Wacom tablet. I'm using a Intus Pro. I just got it last week before I had just a normal bamboo, so not not so not anything fancy. But the Intus Pro honestly is a really nice addition because you have more uh, pressure sensitivity level and especially I have some useful pr uh, button that I can uh, program and to set some uh, function I I need. Okay, so this is it, and we can always do a uh, before and after. Okay, and the last uh, setting I'm going to do is to add um, radial uh, radial uh, radial setting. I I always forget the name, honestly. <laughs> I always call this tool. Okay, if you just stand uh, two seconds on it uh, is going to show you the name so it's called radial filter okay the official name is radial filter as you can see it's giving like a radial uh, radial draw and inside this uh, you can select actually not inside you can select or to apply your setting inside the tool or outside so in this case uh, if i'm dragging because i select invert mask my setting here is going to apply inside but I want to apply like a small uh, vignette on this uh, picture. So I'm going to click invert and uh, we are having, the, of course, not so high. Okay, and we have this nice vignette that is giving uh, more attention uh, to the subjects. Okay, and now we can save the snapshot number two final and do a uh, before and uh, after before and uh, after and maybe i'm going to little little rise up the exposure to plus 0 020 that is less than one third of stop so when you did this you can always click uh, with the right uh, and say update with current settings so you don't have to create a new snapshot and in this way you can do again before and after and I think this is the final for this picture so thanks for uh, have seen with me today this uh, tutorial of past production with uh, Lightroom and I'm going to wait you for the next one uh, uh, soon here on my channel so please subscribe uh, and uh, want to hear also your comment thanks